Today we will look at Kiki Smith and a few of her pieces. But before we get to that, here is some background information on Kiki Smith. She was born on January 18th, 1954 in Germany and she moved to New Jersey and was raised there. Her parents were both artists. Her father was Tony Smith, a famed minimalist sculptor who may have inspired her interest in the abstract since she always helped him as a child. She trained as a medical technician as well, which also may account for her interest in the human body. Some of the themes which she likes to address include birth and regeneration, and she also likes to address controversial subjects such as AIDS, gender, and race. Lately though, she likes to relate the human condition and nature. She's still living and she lives in NYC. The first piece that we look at is Lying with the Wolf by Kiki Smith. It is ink and pencil on paper and 88 by 73 inches. It is made in 2001. The subject matter of this piece is a nude woman intimately embracing a wolf. The story behind this is that the woman is based off of Red Riding Hood and St. Genevieve. She was a saint that could actually domesticate wolves. The significance of this is that Kiki com combines two strong women from folk tales and mythological history to create one strong woman figure. The patron of this piece is Kiki Smith herself. She wanted to create this piece to address feminist themes like female domesticity. She says that sometimes her pieces don't actually represent anything except for synthesizing being here on earth, yet they happen to coincide with different themes that are present today. This can be seen by how the woman and the wolf aren't presented as traditional roles of predator and prey. The site of the piece is the Pace Gallery in New York. She wanted to put it in a public gallery so that she could convey her message to as much of the audience as possible. She wanted to change the viewer's perspective about myths and folk tales which they thought they knew, and while also putting a feminist spin on them. This is also a way for Kiki to tackle another controversial subject of the time. The media she uses is paper which connects to the feminist theme because it is usually thought of as a delicate feminine material when it is actually strong and very malleable. The scale of the piece also adds to it because it is very large so that the viewer becomes engrossed in the piece and notices all the details of the piece including the texture of the paper and the lines and shading that she uses. The purpose of this piece is meant to reinterpret the tales of Red Riding Hood and St. Genevieve and create a strong female figure through mythological and spiritual history. Also, it speaks about the power hierarchy of relationships by creating a skewed predator-prey relationship. Since men are typically seen as the predator like the wolf, this skews that relationship since the woman is almost dominating the predator with her embrace a neo-expressionist because of her involvement in the group Collab during the 80s, which carries on through her style to now. She uses this piece to express her point of view about feminism. Next piece that we look at is Lilith. It was made in 1994, it is 33 by 27 and a half by 19 inches, and it is made of silicon, bronze, and glass. The subject matter of this piece is Lilith, the lesser known first wife of Adam. She demanded to be equal to Adam and was promptly kicked out of the garden. After this, she flew to the demon world and was replaced by Eve. The myth has it that she wanders earth enraged and wild, tormenting men with her piercing eyes. The patron of this piece is Kiki Smith. She made this for herself to express her feelings towards this lesser known person in religion and turn this cultural narrative into a feminist perspective. The site of the piece is the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. She is perched on a wall while one walks downstairs. This is meant to catch a person's attention due to this unorthodox placing. It may even scare the viewer as they turn the corner to go downstairs, which also catches their attention. The media of this piece is silicon, bronze, and glass to make the figure 3D and actually lifelike. The scale of this figure is human size to connect it to people who look at it and the person of Lilith. 
Now the purpose of this piece is to function as a message from Kiki about reinterpreting cultural narratives. This is another way she skews a myth about a person. It is also feminist because she talks about reclaiming the woman's body. She chose a sexually voracious and anti-maternal figure because it represents her independence. It also puts her equal to the typical man who loves sex and is seen as anti-parenting. She hangs from the wall with piercing glass eyes to represent how inhuman she is, yet still holds a human form. This plays off of Kiki's themes of humans and animals. In this case, it is her animalistic tendencies which she bonds with, such as Lilith's desire for power over Adam. She also uses an animalistic feature such as the piercing eyes to relate her to animals. She also uses these same eyes to change how women are depicted in art because usually a woman's gaze is passive as seen in past art, while this one is the eyes pierce you gazing directly back at you. The style of this piece is expressive because she uses this to convey feminist messages while using a nude human anatomy. She also has a slight chiaroscuro effect which helps enrich the bronze as well. This keeps it 3D and dynamic.